There is a notion that Americans are lawsuit happy and that everyone who files a lawsuit is just out to win some big money. But even the big verdicts you hear about in the headlines aren't always what they seem. So every Friday, attorney Phil Harding from Harding & Associates answers our legal questions. He's back uh, on the program this morning. So, you know, you, you brought up this very interesting case that I think everyone in the country remembers, even though it's been many, many years now. That's years, the, the McDonald's right? hot coffee case. So we thought this lady was uh, awarded tons and tons of money for being burned, severely burned, right? Right, and this happened really 20 years ago. I can't was, believe it's been that long. It, it was, it, and her name is Stella Liebeck, and I think what I'm kind of promoting everyone to do here is when you hear about these big verdicts, look into them, and let's talk a little bit about this McDonald's hot copy case. Stella Liebeck, and she was 79 at the time, okay. she got third-degree burns, on her body. She was in the hospital for eight days and she offered to settle this case for $20,000 before it went to trial. So she went to McDonald's and said, I'll, I'll take $20,000, this will all go away. And they right. said no. She said, I need to pay for my medical bills. Okay. Can you give me the $20,000? And McDonald's said, you know, it's coffee, it's supposed to be hot. No, we're not going to pay you on that. So hired an attorney and went to trial. And at the conclusion of this, she ended up getting 200000 in compensatory damages, which is pain and suffering, the um, medical bills and the like, but they ruled that she was 20% at fault. They also awarded her $2.7 million in punitive damages. And what punitive damages are, are meant to punish the wrongdoer. And we're going to go over a little bit about compensatory versus punitive damages, but I think I want to talk just a little bit about this lawsuit and breaking it down I think is going to be highly informative for everyone as we go through this. Yeah, so so talk about the 200,000 that she got and then the 2.7 because in the end she didn't really get all of that. Well, and at the end there was some sort of settlement that no one knows about. Okay. I mean, they know about it, but we don't know about it. Okay. And, and so what what happened is this 200,000 because she was found 20% at fault, that means 20% of that 200,000 is reduced. Okay. So it, essentially um, let's just look at this. You have 200000 At that point, you deduct 20%, so she gets 160000 Okay. Now, let's talk about the $2.7 million. Again, the jurors leave and they think, we really did a great thing. And to get punitive damages, you have to prove that someone's act is willful and wanton. Or, let, let's talk about this. It shows clearly, here's the 200000 20% reduction, so the amount of compensatory damages that Ms. Liebach recovered was $160,000. Okay, okay. Now on the punitive damages. And this is the punishment part. This is the punishment part, and it's meant to punish the wrongdoer, not really compensate Ms. Liebach. And the reason why jurors are asked to do this every once in a while is if someone's acts are willful and wanton or grossly negligent. And so what happens on this $2.7 million, most all states have what's known as tort reform which says certain things. You can only recover a certain amount. And one of those things is if you get punitive damages, you can only get one times what your compensatory damages are. Or if there's a separate hearing, you can get up to three times. So as soon as the jury wa walked out, Mrs. Liebach said, wow, we got 2.7 million, and the judge says, I don't think so. He says, hold on, hold on, let's take it down. Well, I don't understand that because if I'm a jury member and I'm thinking I'm helping a person, right. Uh, and then I, I leave and find out later that they reduce it. I, I would be hacked off, you know, you, as a jury member. You, you would be. Yeah. And um, what this really promotes is, I think, us as, every one of us is a potential juror. Yeah. To look into these cases and don't say, oh, someone got $3 million for hot coffee, because they really didn't, because this $2.7 million got reduced down to 40, uh, 480000 But, Phil, why don't they just call it like it is then? Why don't they let the jury members know, okay, um, you said here in Colorado you can only get one times the compensatory. So let, let's say in her case she got 160000 compensatory, right? Right. So you get one times that. Why doesn't the jury get to know that for punitive? That's all she's going to get. She's not going to get any, anywhere above that. Why well, not just tell everybody? There, there's a lot of things that jurors don't know. I mean, they don't know. Remember how I said there was a settlement discussion beforehand of this, this 20000 Jurors will never hear that there's a settlement conference beforehand or any settlement offers. But why offers. not? And because <laughs> the courts have, because our legislature, has ruled that if people know about that, or if they know about insurance, if insurance is involved, if you mention that, that's a mistrial. And so they say, we don't want this 
in the courthouse at all. We want the jurors to make their individual decision. I agree with you. I think the jurors should know, but that's not the way the law is. That's not the law is in almost every of the 50 United States because um, the people who make the laws, unfortunately, aren't you and me. It's the big businesses that get in there and they say, we want certainty. We don't want to go out of business because of one lawsuit, so we want a cap on this stuff. And so, obviously, I think yeah, that that's wrong. I get wrong, that. I, I, I guess I understand if there is a cap place, whoever makes that decision, um, fine, but we all need to know about it is my point. But anyway, interesting stuff. Thank you so much. My uh, pleasure. Interesting Friday here on Colorado's Best. And if you have any legal questions for Phil, he wants to hear from you. Just log on to coloradosbest.tv. Look for his photo right there and click on it. You could submit your own legal questions to him. And he does take the time to answer them personally. And sometimes he brings them here on Colorado's Best and addresses them right here on the air. Now, if you would like to contact Phil at his office directly at Harding & Associates, here's the number, 303-762-9500 or go to hlaw.org.